It is time for Over There with Morella Rostroffer. Morella is our European correspondent. Yes, we have one. She joins us weekly. She is in Switzerland, close to Zurich, I believe, because I'm going to keep saying this until you start moving around again because it's it was so long that I never knew where you were. So, hi, how are you? Very well. Thank you, Jill. Yes, I think everybody is... Uh, will be happy to be moving around a little bit more than uh, at the moment. Uh, but for now, from uh, Switzerland, some uh, news uh, from France. And if we have time, a little update on the traveling uh, conditions for uh, the summer between the US and Europe. Uh, so I uh, wanted to begin with France because uh, this is uh, something that uh, happened actually uh, already in uh, in April, but I thought it was worth mentioning because it's an uh, unusual um, uh, event. And I'm talking about the open letter that has been sent to, um, that has been printed in um, in, in, in a paper in France and was directed to uh, the, uh, the, the government of France um, asking for drastic changes in the country. Um, this letter was actually signed by active soldiers, I believe around a thousand, um, and among them, 20 retired generals. Um, it was published on the 21st of April, which is um, by no means a coincidence when uh, we add to that that it was also the date, the 60th anniversary of a failed coup d'etat uh, in France. It was the day uh, that uh, some uh, general general uh, did a putsch against General de Gaulle uh, because they didn't want uh, the independence of um, of Algeria at the time. So all of this is not a coincidence and speak very much for, let's say, a kind of uh, threatening uh, timing. Um, before talking about the content, content I think it's uh, worth mentioning that Florence Parly, who is the Minister of the Armed Forces, uh, said, after having read the letter, that two immutable principles guide the action of members of the military with regard to politics neutrality and loyalty. Um, why that? And we can come now to the content of the letter. It is a warning, according um, the one who wrote this letter, about the dangers that um, uh, faced by France, about its disintegration even so, no um, no fear of using some very strong words, and um, I think everybody would agree by saying that one of the main reasons for this disintegration in their eyes is Islamism and the hordes of the banlieue. Uh, the banlieue um, uh, is the poor uh, are the poor suburbs. Um, around the cities in uh, in France, and most of the time in those uh, banlieues, um, you will find um, uh, people that uh, are uh, religiously linked to Islamism. Uh, not necessarily um, extremism, but this is a topic uh, uh, on its on its own. Um, so they are also mentioning the um, attacking uh, of uh, statues and uh, other specifics of French history. So there is also 
um, a, um, some kind of uh, refusal to uh, want to put into question anything that has been done in the past. And they also talk very clearly about what they say is a risk of civil war um, if this uh, growing chaos is, uh, isn't stopped. Um, it gives also by the same token the entire responsibility of potential death during this potential civil war to the actual government. What was the reaction to the letter? Um, I think um, it's, uh, it's, it's always difficult to speak with statistics because they happen to be very often not very accurate. But according the the poll that has been done after this letter, 58% of uh, the people asked um, are in favor of this letter, which is really a very high number. That being said, the government uh, is absolutely ready to take uh, sanctions against uh, all the active members who signed the letter um, because in the military rules of uh, France you do have a clause that states uh, that people in the military have obviously the right to have their own opinion um, and religious beliefs but all of this has to be in the private sphere and they are asked to keep, um, in a way, discreet when it comes then to the public uh, sphere, uh, which is, by writing such a letter, obviously a breach of, uh, of that clause. Um, they also get uh, got uh, yeah they also also got the support of uh, Marine Le Pen, who is uh, um, part of what is considered considered a far right uh, um, uh, party in France, um, and it is obviously seen as a, an attempt to um, uh, work already on on her campaign for the next uh, presidential race which is already taking uh, place next year. Um, she actually called the general to join her in the Battle of France. So all of this is, of course, has to be seen as something very theoretical because obviously nobody in France um, ever thought even for one second that, that this letter is really going to lead to any coup or any civil war or anything. It is basically a letter stating and showing um, how um, unhappy uh, many people are and specifically in this case in, uh, in, in the military. There will be consequences, and uh, Jean Castex, who is the Prime Minister of France, uh, said that this text opposed to all our Republicans' uh, principles to honor to uh, the duties of the army. Um, the generals involved only represent themselves. Um, so eventually there will be sanctions, they will maybe send to early retirement, um, which has also at the end uh, financial consequences. Uh, but there are also other parties in France that think uh, that uh, these kind of san sanctions are by no far enough considering the offense and that there should be also some uh, penal um, uh, sanction. Um, in this letter, uh, one could also uh, see that um, they basically think that the actual government is doing nothing in order to uh, fight uh, extremism in, uh, in the country which is not completely accurate. And that depends very much, of course, on uh, uh, who you would ask. But for some people, 
um, Macron, President Macron, does too much. And for other people, he does not enough. But the fact is that some new uh, uh, rules and some new laws have been made or are in the making. And there is definitely a lot going on. And it is also important that this uh, problem of the banlieue, of the, of the extremist, that all of these issues are dealt with because obviously um, it is not something that uh, can or should be underestimated. And uh, in France, uh, one hears quite uh, regularly about uh, attacks uh, not lately um, not very big attacks luckily uh, but uh, still attacks that take place from time to time and that are directly linked to um, religious uh, beliefs or religious issues so this is definitely something that has uh, been already on the agenda of uh, the actual government, uh, but um, obviously was not taken as um, uh, uh, dramatically uh, uh, said in the letter uh, as a potential civil war situation or uh, disintegration of, uh, of the entire country. Um, this is definitely going uh, a step further. Uh, but uh, the fact is that President Macron is today in a, in, in, in a delicate position because for some he does too little and for others he does too much. Thank you very much, Mirella Rostrofer. Over there. My pleasure.